right. Movie retrospective. Yeah, doing this one on a classic, man. Rambo. Rambo First Blood. First I, Blood. I'm pretty sure I got this deluxe uh, Blu-ray from a friend of ours uh, of the show named Louis. Uh, uh, Hernandez, yeah. Yeah. I think, I think Hernandez sent that to me. I'm pretty, pretty sure. sure. I'm pretty sure. It's a real nice uh, Blu-ray. Got a lot of ex, uh, ex, uh, extras and stuff on it. I haven't really watched all the extras on it yet, but we just watched that last night. And, man, it was good to see that movie again. I know, I hadn't seen it in years and years. And that's the thing, it's kind of like, so this movie, um, this was, I want to say too that in the Patreon poll, that was like actually a three-way tie for what movies to do this week. But because First Blood was one of the ones that was in the three-way tie, I just asked Tom to break the tie. Because I was like, I'm not reviewing three movies this week for Christ's sake. What's cool about that movie is that it's an action movie, but it was one of the early action movies that I consider to be a, a, an early action movie of the 80s. The genre had not really become a meme yet. It had elements of an action movie, but it it wasn't so crystallized to where it was a formula. It also had elements of a horror movie and social commentary, and it was just a really good movie, man. It was... Um, a lot like Rocky, in a certain way, kind of a story of an underdog who comes out in a way kind of like a downtrodden champion. Yeah. And a little bit of an anti-hero, too, I guess. Yeah. But yeah, so this came out in 1982, and like you were saying about sort of the action movies of the 80s, I think a lot of people, when they when they talk about action movies from the 80s they kind of talk about real over the top shit you know what I mean like everything's blowing up but everything's yeah, no, the, nobody's running out of ammo which I the first real action movie was Commando which was also fucking excellent and, that, and Commando <laughs> was Arnold's version of First Blood and that I think that kind of started the the fucking bromance between the two where they, these guys were in this fucking weird competition with each other they eventually became friends but they were all trying to top each other. There are scenes in this movie that I'd say, oh, that's where, that's where fucking Arnie did the fuck, you know, that's that's why Arnie, Arnie did the, uh, jumped off that cliff in Predator 1. <laughs> because yeah. he was hanging from that cliff in fucking Rambo. There's all kinds of good shit in there. But yeah, so I, I, I think that people's perception of these kind of over-the-top action movies from the 80s that doesn't stem so much from this one. I think that stems maybe from the sequel, which was yeah. a lot more overblown and a lot more kind of over the top. You know what I mean? Yeah, if I remember correctly, though, the sequel to this was like a response from to Commando, though. I think. I gotta, yeah, they, I, 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 think I think they started getting like more and more ridiculous yeah, and more and more cartoonish, like over time. Yeah, Commando was when all of a sudden an action movie became the action movie I was thinking of. It's like a fucking video game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. yeah, this one is not like that at all, really. And a lot of people have said that this is probably more an action thriller, I yeah. guess you could call it. It's not a straight ahead, you know, yes, there's explosions, yes, there's gunfights, yes, there's violence, but it, there's a lot more going on in it than that. There's like a lot bigger story. Social commentary. A lot of social it. commentary, a yeah. lot of um, actual kind of like an emotional kind of thing. And the thing about it too, the the thing about the ending is that I like that this one doesn't have... The ending isn't just this big... Because I, I feel like a lot of action movies in the 80s had, like, you know, your your good guy and your bad guy having, like, a big, uh, you know, kind of final boss fight, you know, like, at yeah. the end. And this one didn't really have that. No, he walks away from it. He which walks, I thought yeah. was kind of a cool uh, way yeah. of doing it. Now, there's two different endings to this movie, and yeah. this version has both endings. The theatrical ending, Rambo gives up. The deleted ending is a lot better. I didn't know about it until modern times. I've already seen it. I haven't seen I haven't seen it on this uh, Blu-ray yet, though. And the the original ending really was going to be that um, Rambo dies. Yeah. And uh, that actually is a much better ending in terms of dramatic impact. It makes a lot more sense. It does, yeah. But you have to understand the context of the time in which this movie came out. This was a statement in support of, of Vietnam veterans that were still kind of catching a lot of flack in society in 82. They were, my dad was in Vietnam. He was uh, in the Navy, okay? And oh, that's another fucking story right there. <laughs> 
during this time, there were a lot of young Vietnam veterans still. And um, the original ending would have been really fucking dark and a lot of fucking heavy shit to lay on those dudes. I, 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 think, I think Stallone and, and his team did the right thing by giving it a little bit more of a positive ending, that there was hope for the future. Yeah, I mean, because, they, they shot both endings, yeah. and I want to get, too, into the book, because this is based on a book, in case you didn't know, uh, which I actually did read about ten years ago. Um, but I think the main thing, I think a lot of people thought it's like, oh, they just wanted to make sequels. I don't know if they were thinking that at the time. I think that it was just the fact that they showed both endings to um, to test audiences, and test audiences didn't like that he died at the end yeah because they thought we got so invested in his character and it's like yeah, we, it see seemed live. like a waste of the, you know they wanted right. to see him live so that's um why they ended up he didn't get away obviously because he got arrested but <laughs> for all of the havoc that he caused but um you know they they just didn't want to see him die after all that. yeah the, even though i do agree that it is a more impactful ending yeah and artistically that made a lot more sense yeah um you created me you have to kill me that's the fucking but man, there were a lot of fucking young Vietnam veterans running around, and, and that's not the ending that they wanted to see. They didn't feel like they were defeated by that. Yeah. The you know by by Vietnam, you know what I mean? They they, it was a different era. There was no social media back then. The United States knew what war was, from the aspect of say like. World War Two, maybe Korea. Vietnam was a very new kind of war. It was nowadays what you would call a, a corporate forever war. But the guys that were fighting it were being drafted and they didn't know what that was. Now we know exactly what that was. Uh, well, because there was no internet, mainstream American society didn't, didn't know what Vietnam really was. My dad was in that war and I've talked to him a couple years ago about it and he didn't know what Vietnam was and he was in it. Yeah. Talking to him more recently, <clears throat> now that he's had more exposure to th things like fucking stuff that information that's coming out of the internet and politics today, my dad now finally gets it what a forever war was and what General Eisenhower was warning about the the misplaced powers, you know, of the military industrial complex. It took a long time for that to become in the American public sphere. And America's addicted to that. And that's what this movie is about. It was one of the first movies that talked about the ramifications of these forever wars. Because Vietnam was not a war. No war was ever declared. It was just a police action. Yeah. Very limited police action. We got involved in a civil war between North and South Vietnam. American, the American people had nothing to gain from it. it. It didn't even really have much to do with communism. It more was a way of just keeping generals promoted and keeping military corporations flush with money and developing military tactics and developing big corporate contracts with Bell and fucking Colt and to keep the economy going. You know, uh, America's economy, a lot of it has to do with war production. And that's what that shit was about. And when I was in service, I thought it was gone. No, it turned out I joined up for the first Gulf War, you know. And that seemed like that might have been a legitimate war. But then a couple years later, they said, oh, by, by the way, we're, the, the U.S. Army is no longer a war fighting outfit. We're going to prepare to conduct operations other than war. And then the next thing you know, they're sending guys to down Operation Just Cause down in Somalia. And it becomes that again. And then it just becomes that over and over and over again. And it, no. Well, so in that sense, I think it's good that the movie version of Rambo made him more sympathetic. You know, yeah. yes, he does um, some bad things, obviously. Like, he pretty much fucks up this whole entire town. So, um, what well, was his anger and his frustration? Because right. They but they, sent but he's him. still a sympathetic character. Yeah. They draft back in those days. They had back in Vietnam. They had drafts. They don't have drafts anymore because you get dudes like that. It's uncontrollable. Now, what they do most of the fucking good shit is run by fucking terrorists that we hire, terrorists from other fucking countries, mercenaries from other countries, and uh, corporations. 
and corporate warfare, legal warfare, and then our troops just kind of sit around and act like law enforcement. Operations other than war. It's fucking crazy. It's because they don't want to make dudes like that anymore. Where you draft a dude off the street, train him up, and then go have him fight a war that they that they never intended to win. It's just to keep contracts running. And, of course, there's going to be a lot of anger and bitter, bitterness because all his friends have been killed doing stupid shit. You know what I mean? And then he comes back home and nobody really knows what the war was about because they didn't really it didn't have anything to do with them. And everybody's so, yeah, so like you're some kind of baby killer. What the hell wrong? You know they don't really you know the American public didn't even know what had happened. And I yeah, because I feel like around that time period, all the a lot of the soldiers coming back from Vietnam, because particularly because we had lost it, um, you know, or or, or it didn't go the no, way we just more like thought. just left it. Yeah, and yeah, it's, yeah. so I feel like people had a lot of resentment towards the soldiers because they didn't really know what was going on over there either. So yeah. they got treated really badly when they came back. So the thing about it, so in case you didn't know, like I said, this is based on um, a novel, which is also called First Blood. It came out in 1972 by David Morrell. Now, the novel, I guess, like I said, I read it about 10 years ago, and it was it's pretty good. It's not very long. I, I remember it being kind of short. The story of it is similar, but I will say that in the book, Rambo is a much less sympathetic character. He kills everybody. Yeah. He kills everybody. And he doesn't, like, I think he kills shit. I don't even remember how many people he killed. Like, I think in the first, um, when they were first talking about, because they were talking about making this into a movie, like, ever since the book came out, because the book was, like, a bestseller, or was at least really popular. So all the first iterations of the script were hewed much closer to the novel, you know, because I think the first three versions of it had him killing 16 people and him dying at the end, killing himself. Now at the end of the book, he, um, him and, uh, Tiesel, the sheriff, they kind of get into a gun battle and they wound each other. Tiesel's dying. And then Troutman, the Colonel, um, kills Rambo. And uh, he's, he's already wounded and he kills him like with a shotgun in the back of the head or something like that. And then he sits with the sheriff like in, while the sheriff's dying. So that's how the book ends. But as I said, they, they kind of made it where he killed himself in the, in the other ending for this. But, you know, I, I, people thought that was just too bleak or whatever. But he, but Rambo doesn't really kill anybody in this on purpose now he wounds a lot of people and he blows a lot of shit up and he does a lot of property damage but the one dude that dies that one one of the several asshole cops in this um that was kind of that dude's own fault because he was like hanging out of the fucking helicopter like trying to shoot at rambo and yeah rambo, rambo threw didn't kill a anybody in this no he didn't kill anybody no. he that dude fell out of that helicopter that was his own fault and then later that um the bad guy cop was shooting at Rambo. Rambo kind of defended himself, shot him through the legs, but didn't kill him. Yeah, he lived. He lived. Yeah. So, so yeah. So, Rambo like didn't I... kill anybody, and that did open it up for another sequel. Yeah. Because, yeah, he did blow up a couple of buildings, and people were looking for him, but he was mostly just running. Yeah. Um, he did um, shoot some dogs. Remember, they, they, they attacked some Or they, he stabbed they, the dogs. Stabbed the dogs, that's yeah, right. Yeah, because he had that hunting knife. I thought he shot the dude. He shot the dude that had the hunting dog. The 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 uh, the. Dog he shot him in the leg also. Shot him in the legs, yeah. So, like I said, he did wound a bunch of people. Yeah. But the one cop that fell out, he just fell out of the helicopter. I mean, you yeah. could you could argue that that dude was trying to murder him. Yeah, that's what I mean. So that was kind of self defense too, because all, all he did was throw a rock at the helicopter, like, "Hey, quit shooting at me," and he was know. hanging from the side of the cliff, and the guy he from the helicopter was trying the to shoot him. Yeah. And he oh, he was trying to run. <clears throat> Which, that was very unusual in the 80s. Now you see guys run from the cop and they'll shoot him in the back. You know, it's just as fucked up as society is right now. Well, the, yeah, okay, so it. let's talk a little bit about... So, like I said, they've been trying to um, adapt this novel all throughout the 1970s. And many of the first versions of the script were much closer to the book, so they were much darker. Um, you know, Rambo was much more clearly a bad guy. So, which is maybe why it didn't really get off the ground. Um, initially, interestingly, they wanted Steve McQueen to play Rambo. He'd have been a little too old. That's but... what they determined. They said, yeah. yeah, he's a little too old to be a v Vietnam veteran. Yeah. Right around the time, I think this was 75 or 76, they were first, yeah. you know, trying to make this into a Korean movie. Korean War, yeah, Vietnam, though. No. 
Yeah, that's, again, that's why they ended up going with someone younger. Now, obviously, because Stallone had done Rocky and it was, like, such a huge huge success, they finally got him involved, and then they got Stallone in on the writing process as well. So he also helped to uh, co-write the screenplay. Yeah. And, um, all right, so in case you haven't seen First Blood, I don't know why you wouldn't have, but here's what happens in the movie. So poor John Rambo has come back from Vietnam. Now he had, how long has he been back? For some reason, I want to say Probably about ten years, huh? Because I thought what? seven years. Seven Somebody years? said seven years. That so he would have been. been back. He, he must have left around the late seventies. Yeah. All right, left theater in the late seventies, and this is taking place, I think, in eighty one or eighty two, right? Yeah, it was I shot think, in eighty one, so. and I don't see any reason why it so was less than not ten around years, that time. Eight, nine years, yeah. seven years. I think yeah. somebody told me it was seven years. Yeah. I don't remember. How he he was just walking around, around living off the land. They said he stank, and he had a his army field jacket with an America flag on it. Yeah, they it. didn't give a lot of backstory, like where he had come from. He was only in this particular area because he was looking for the last member of his team. He said he couldn't hold a job. He didn't like him. He didn't like work in the civilian world so he just he walked around and lived off the land and was looking for his buddies yeah and they were all uh dead yeah except for he went to the last one's house because he had given him his address or whatever so at the very beginning like the first scene of the movie he goes back and um you know speaks to the dude's wife or mom or whoever that is and um she says yeah he died too he died of cancer from agent orange yeah so that was like the last one so at this point, obviously, uh, Rambo's pretty bummed out about the shit. And so he ends up going to this town called Hope. Um, in the universe of the movie, it's supposed to be Washington State, although they actually shot it in British Columbia. And they shot it in the wintertime, so you can see, like, how cold it is, like, when he's walking down the street and, like, fucking, um, you know, and he had to run around in the woods, like, with the fucking, <laughs> his fucking white beater t-shirt on and all that kind of stuff. They said he was, like, freezing his ass off. Yeah. But, um, so he ends up going to this town and the cop there played by Brian Dennehy when this was kind of like Brian Dennehy had been in some stuff prior to this. He was not the first choice for this role. Um, there was like a bunch of other actors that they had wanted to be in this, but they dropped out for whatever reason. Um, but this ended up being like one of his biggest roles. And this was kind of like the thing that, yeah, you this, know, this movie was a huge hit and, they, and they, it was, and they weren't really planning for this to be a hit. I don't think they thought it was going to be that good. I don't think Hollywood... It wasn't... This wasn't the kind of movie that Hollywood wanted to make in those days. It just turned out that it it had... It got backing and this... When it came out... I mean, I didn't see it when it came out. But I heard about it. I didn't see it until later on VHS. But um, everybody was talking about this movie when it came out. Everybody. You know what's interesting, too? According to Sylvester Stallone, the first initial cut of this movie i can't even imagine this Mm -hmm. the first initial cut of this movie was like three and a half hours long and he him and his agent watched it and they were like this is the worst shit ever like this is gonna ruin my career Uh and so finally they edited it down to like 93 minutes and that was like the theatrical cut that you see just like i can't imagine what else was in there just probably a lot of scenes you know (laughs) yeah they are they shoot scenes a lot of scenes yeah Scenes Three and a half talking. hours long. Scenes of looking at shit. <laughs> yeah, they do. I guess so. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, so three and a half hours, I can't imagine. Talking. Yeah. A bunch of talking. They're talking to each other. Cops talking to each other. Yeah. There's a lot of fucking... There, there's a lot of uh, iconic characters in this, too. You know what I mean? Like, the cop. What's the, what's the main cop? And then the state police guy. Yeah. Just the way... The dynamic between those two. And then... Uh, Rambo's Colonel. Yeah. Eventually shows up. What was, Troutman. His, what was his name? Troutman. Troutman, yeah. Troutman shows up. Mike, I Which, think I think Kirk Douglas was initially supposed to have that yeah. role, but he dropped out, I think because he thought Rambo should die at the end. Yeah. And uh, he didn't like, you know, the... Because I'm telling you, this wouldn't, have, this wouldn't have flown in Hollywood in the 80s. It was very anti-Vietnam war. So yeah, they, wouldn't, they wouldn't have liked this. Um, but the Troutman character, I mean, he is fucking... He isn't an archetype in this in in the in the fucking action movie genre and especially in this property i think he was in three of these movies richard krenna yeah he Which, was and yeah. he got brought in at the last minute because like i said kirk right. douglas was supposed to play that role but he right. dropped out now the problem with him is that i think he's great he i think he fucking does a great performance it's not authentic that is not an authentic 
military man of the of that era. First of all, the way he's wearing that beret, I'd fucking pull that fucking beret off his head <laughs> and throw that shit on the ground and fucking stamp on it. That is not how you, you wear a fucking beret, all right? He's wearing that shit like a French painter and shit. That's that he's got that shit totally wrong. I could tell they didn't fucking shrink that fucking beret. You got to put that beret as wool, and when we wore them things, you had to put it in the water. I think I th now I think all infantry wears fucking black berets, but in our days it was just rangers. But I got issued an orange one for a fucking MFO mission. But they were wool, and you had to put them in the water, get them wet, and then you had to let them shrink up. Uh, I forgot exactly how we should. I think we put them in the dryer to shrink them up as much as possible. And you had to put it on your head when it was wet and let it fucking form fit. There's a special way we had that <laughs> shit. It had to be tight, and then over your eye, it had the fucking little board, and it had to come down. He had that shit poofed out like he was fucking Jacques and shit, you know. Jacques Pierre and shit, you know. That is not how you wear a fucking military beret. Kept wanting to fucking throw that thing and throwing it on the ground. And his, and he's in his fucking overcoat, but it's not really well pressed. Okay? It's just... He shows up in full fucking dress greens and shit, but he looks a little bit like a rag bag. And most of what he's saying, his dialogue is fucking spot on for an action movie. You know what I mean? Like well, that's yeah, what you I want for an action movie. Yeah. But that's not that. But a, a fucking real colonel would never talk that way. That's like right out of some kind of army recruitment film. It's just generic, generic, stereotypical. Yeah, but like and I said, just, movies in real life are yeah, yeah. It's very, it, but. I think it'd have been cooler. I, I don't. Rem, I don't remember him being as, as, as much of a fucking propaganda, uh, you know, sounding fucking mechanism you know, in the other movies. That he sounded a little more realistic. But uh, I can't remember. I haven't seen Rambo Show in yeah. a really long time. Officers of that, especially field grade officers of that time of that era, were uh, crazy. They were fucking wild asses. They were, um, you know, fucking. I, I grew up around them in my military academy, you know, but the, the older generations of fucking field grade officers were uh, wild asses. And they were funny. A, a, a better example of the way they actually acted would be like in Star Trek Enterprise fucking General Shran, or Commander Shran. It was played by fucking uh, same dude that... Uh, Jeffrey Combs. Yeah. Jeffrey Combs can, did it perfectly. That's exactly the way the old generation of officers were from the Korean War, Vietnam War era. But, um, yeah. That was that was the only problem with the movie is that he sounded a little fake. The rest of the characters sounded kind of realistic. Yeah, I mean, so so poor Rambo gets to this fucking town, right? This yeah. dinky-ass little, you know, butthole town. And he's basically just wandering through there looking for a fucking diner or some shit. And yeah. Brian Den Dennehy, playing Sheriff Teasel decides i don't like the look of this it's you fucking hippie or whatever like his hair's too long and he looks like a drifter fucking drifter you let yeah. one in here all their they'll tell all their drifter friends and yeah. all that other kind of shit so he basically takes a dislike to him like immediately he's like get in the car and he just takes him to the edge of town and it was like yeah get out of here now at this point and because we were watching this last night and we said now probably you can you can blame rambo for just not going, man, fuck that place, and just keep walking. He did turn around and go back to that town, and that's what started all the trouble. Yeah, well, his 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 colonel. I can understand why he's mad. His colonel <laughs> said, "Hey, man, this is partly you. You you're the one that made this." You know, man. It was it was it's a good movie. You know, if you haven't seen it, then you're you're kind of missing out on it. It's it's a pretty good movie. Well, I mean, it's easily. Yeah. One of the best, if not if not the best, action movies of the '80s, and I mean, yeah. and I mean, like I said, it's the thing that's cool about it. Is it doesn't have it has some over the top shit in it, but not to the extent that some of the ones in the you know later the mid to late '80s had, yeah. where everything was just like ridiculously yeah. overblown and just like everything was a big explosion. This has that too. This has like a lot of really good action sequences, and you know Stallone did most of his own stunts. He did all this other kind of stuff. So yeah, so. Like I said, he decides to come back in town. The cops are dicks, um, except for David Caruso. He's like the only one that's like a good. He David Caruso was such a baby in this. I can't. Imagine. He was so young. Yeah, I like that touch that uh, that that the younger cops were kind of like, hey, let's not really fuck. With it was this like, kid. let's can it we was, not? Yeah, it's it, like it, holy it was, crap. It was the older cops that had fucking egos and shit. And you know, it was funny. There were all these older, overweight cops 
mad at the fucking hot young Vietnam guy. Well, yeah. They even fucking stripped him down and fucking hit him with a water hose and shit. And tried, yeah. to, tried to cut his hair. See, I was but kind I of was like, trying, what, I'm like, this, this is... kind of, what the hell's going on here, man? Yeah, that's kind you of what I always think about. Yeah. yeah. I mean, this it is a small town, and I guess they didn't have anything better to do than just yeah. randomly terrorize yeah. a person that, that was just walking through town not doing anything. Yeah. So, so it's like, even though you can say that Rambo's reaction to what happened to him was a little over the top. Um, but you can't fucking blame the guy. I mean, you know, it's like yeah. he was just walking. He was just trying to get a fucking burger or something. The cops start fucking with him and they start, and then he starts having fucking nom flashbacks from yeah. when he was a POW. And then he just, you know, he's freaking out and he just starts like kicking them and punching their lights out and shit like that, which like I said, deservedly so. Cause a lot of those cops were douches. And then they just wouldn't stop fucking with him. Like, they yeah. just kept... And like I said, I was watching another review of this, and he said pretty much the same exact thing that you said. He's like, that this this whole situation could have been avoided if that cop didn't have such a gigantic ego. Yeah. That he's just like, oh, this dude that was just wandering through here and looks like a scumbag, um, you know, he dared to defy me. Me and my tiny little fucking town. My little yeah. kingdom where he's... You know, what I think even Rambo calls him King Shit Cop. Like, yeah. some, that's exactly what he is. So he's like, you came in my little dinky ass domain and made me look bad and wouldn't do what I said. Yeah. So now he's just going to go to the fucking ends of the earth. Even when it gets his people killed or injured, it's like he doesn't care. He's just going to keep on going. Yeah, Rambo tells him, gets his hands on him after he fucking hurt a lot of his dudes. Gets his hands on him, puts a fucking knife in his throat, and he goes, maybe back in the world, you know. You have power, but out here, this is my world, you know, which is all true. Yeah, you because know, he was, he was, uh, you know, it was all about fucking ambush, counter ambush, and living off the land. And but it was called kind of a fucking hopeless. It was a hopeless thing. You couldn't really. They knew his name, so there was no way that they knew his. They knew he was John Rambo, so there was no escape. They'll yeah, eventually get Green you. Green Beret, Congressional yeah. Medal of yeah, Honor, and all that kind of stuff. They knew exactly who he was. So now that like kind you kind of were... a dumb kind. Of, and, and, to me, I'm watching and I'm way was like, man, Rambo's kind of dumb. I just would have gone to the next town. I would have too. Yeah. But if that had happened, that would have been really funny if he'd have just like kept walking and then they just rolled the credits. <laughs> you wouldn't yeah. have had a movie. <laughs> and some of it was kind of, some of it was a little hokey, you know, kind of contrived because the chances are what was more, there wasn't a big, a lot of animosity between fucking veterans and cops during that era. All right. What really would have happened most likely, had the cops seen him and wanted to get rid of him, they would have went, oh, man, you know, who are you? Oh, you're, you're a veteran. Oh, fucking yeah. Why don't you come to the station, get yourself cleaned up, get something to eat? And they would have fed him probably there with the cops and then moved him along in the town. It was a little town. That would have been I the mean, easiest Well, way. that would have been the wisest That'd move the, on everyone's part. Probably would have, had, probably would have really but, would have happened. Hey, you want to ride around and uh, go get some donuts, you know, or some shit like that? And, and that would be the best way to keep an eye on him and get rid of him. Clean well, him up, feed him, and pass him along after he... Had the him. sheriff been smart, he would have done that. And yeah. then and then the whole town wouldn't have got blown right. up real good. Well, well, that, well, like I said, I think that's kind of one of the points of the story was that the sheriff's ego got in the way of him yeah. just, like, making the most rational decision. Yeah. You know, he just came out, he just had to be a dick, he just had to make everything yeah. more difficult, and that, you know, well, led to all of this shit happening. If the sheriff was reasonable, there wouldn't have been a movie. Well, yeah, that's so what I'm that's, saying. That's what. It, but you know, in real life, most law enforcement agents know the, the, fucking know how to get what they want out of people without resorting to shit, drastic shit. So uh, they just would have manipulated him. Yeah. Come on to the station, man. Fucking, you know, get yourself cleaned up. Get something to eat. You know, or that. Where are you going next? You know, and then they just moved him out. That's probably what they what they would have done in a little town. Yeah, I mean, shit, they might have even, hey, you want us to, we'll buy you a train ticket or, yeah. we'll talk, you know, or a bus ticket or something like that. I you mean, want a job around station? That yeah, that seems shit. like the easiest thing. See, that would have been, like, so much better for all involved. Yeah. But, yeah, so, like I said, this came out in uh, 82, and it's weird because the reviews of it initially, when it first came out, now, it made a shit ton of money. I think it only cost $15 million to make it, and it ended up making $125 million. Mm -hmm. um the reviews at the time were mixed i think ebert liked it um some other ones were like meh. a lot of people didn't like the ending i i think even roger ebert didn't like the ending because 
he thought, you know, he thought Rambo should have died because that's made more sense with the story. <clears throat> made more sense with the story. But it's really weird how it's kind of one of those cases where, you know, it, it's easier to see things like when you have some years to look back upon it, like, you know, kind of the framework or the context of the movie, like, you know, when, when you can look back with hindsight, because I think like the reviews were kind of mixed and everyone was like, eh, at the time, but then like a few years go by and people started to appreciate it a lot more. You know what I mean? So it was kind of another one of those things, but it was like really successful at the time. Fun fact, this was released in China in 1985 and was the first Hollywood blockbuster to be released in China hmm. and made and sold the most tickets in China for a Hollywood movie up until 2018. Okay. So that's how like popular this well, was. It was there. as good as Rocky. Easy. Oh yeah. I liked it. Yeah, it's like it's a different thing, but you could really see too how what talent uh, Stallone had as a writer, which I think we've talked about before, and I think people because he, it, and it's kind of a shame because I feel like the sequels went more into the kind of meathead, hey, we're just gonna blow everything up kind of thing, yeah. like just this over the top. Um, and I think so. I think that Stallone got um, maybe a little bit typecast with that. And I think people forgot, like, what a good actor he was. Because oh, if yeah. you see, in this movie, like, for most of the movie, he doesn't really have a lot of lines. Like, a lot of his, um, a lot of his emotions and stuff are just conveyed through his face, his, like, yeah. facial expressions and his body language. It's a lot of physical acting. And it's a lot of physical acting as yeah. well. And so, and it's really, really good. And then at the end, like, when he has that fucking emotional breakdown... Yeah. Like in the room where with Troutman, where he's talking about, you know, being in a bar in Saigon and like his friend blowing up like right next to him and him trying to hold all the pieces of the dude together. And he's just like completely a completely broken man and like everything that's been yeah. that he's been holding within him, you know, through the whole movie just comes like pouring yeah, out like, yeah, this big torrent. Yeah. yeah. And it's just and it's really, really good. And I think that's another thing that makes this one of the best action movies is because it doesn't have the ending that you expect where it's just kind of like, you know, Oh, the big showdown between, you know, good and bad yeah, or whatever. One, yeah. It has this big, like a kind of emotional thing at the yeah. end where he just, you know, where he just like lets everything out and he's just like fucking crying and freaking out and yeah, all this formula, other kind of shit. The formula had not been perfected yet. Yeah. Or like, you know, you know it hadn't been codified. Because eventually, this shit starts going on in, in, into stuff like Red Scorpion, which was the Russian version of Rambo, all right? Dolph Lundgren, which I remember enjoying it in the day, but it probably sucked. I'd have to go back and see it again. I, I, Those action can't... movies are fun. Yeah. They're just... Red but, Scorpion. But yeah. they're, but you know, they're real over the top, and it's like, you know, but I think that's why a lot of people like them. It had cool guns in it. A lot of the ones that I was issued. Made the M60 famous. I was an M60 gunner in in Korea at the 506th, fucking Camp Greaves, in the early 90s, and uh, that 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 picture of fucking Rambo there, fucking holding a M60, hip firing it and firing it from the shoulder and stuff. You know what I mean? That just became fucking iconic. Can you fire an M60 from the shoulder? Hell yes, you can. I used to do it all the time. <laughs> yeah, it's not that heavy, about 20 pounds maybe, but yeah, you can do it. Um, also, it uh, had um, Colt SP1s, that's what the cops were carrying, uh, and then the National Guard showed up with uh, M16A1s. I was issued an A1 only in basic training. After that, we got the A2. Let me tell you, young guys that came up shooting these M4 carbines and stuff, there's nothing sweeter than those 20-inch fucking 20-inch barreled A1s with the light barrel. And uh, the A2 was nice too, a little heavier barrel, but that fucking light. A real light M16A1 with the long gas system and everything. Just a sweet shooting, sweet shooting rifle. Like shooting 22 long rifle. Um, real fast follow-up shots. Light, real light. Um, a lot lighter than, a, a, say, like an A4 or an A3. Nowadays, the only reason, only reason why they got rid of those little pencil barrels is because as they got hot, as you continued firing them, not only did the shot group open up, it also shifted from the sights a little bit. Now, it would go back to where it was once the barrel cooled off, but with extensive firing, it became kind of uh, uh, inaccurate. Uh, recently, they fixed that, though. There's a way to relieve the pressure inside that barrel. 
during some process. There's a company called Faxon that makes pencil barrels of all different lengths, 10 and a half inch, all the way up to, I think you can even get a 20 inch, 18, 16 inches barrels. And they're, they weigh next to nothing and they're very accurate. And it does open up a little bit as it gets hot, the shot group, but it doesn't shift from the sights. So you can run a red dot, optics and everything. And very accurate. And if you go back to Eugene Stoner's original concept of a lightweight AR rifle, you know, like a five pound, four and a half pound, five pound rifle, fucking, it's a big difference. It's nice, real nice. Especially with the long gas system in there. See what else is in there. And I've shot them all, even fucking 10.5 inch commando carbines and all that. I've shot all that shit. Uh, I'd still like that. I, I like the A1. The A1 was fucking awesome. Um, and the A2. The A2 is good too. But uh, good, a lot of interesting guns of the 80s were in there. Yeah, so if you're into it. Can I just say another fun fact that I just found out today was that apparently they're going to be doing Bollywood remakes of Rambo, The Expendables, and three other kind of iconic American action movies. (laughs) They're going to do a Bollywood remake? Uh Uh-huh. With all Indian cast? Yeah. Oh, I got to see it. But is it going to be Rambo or is it going to be a character like Rambo? Um, I don't know. I couldn't really determine. Like, I kind of read a little bit about it. I think, I don't know. I mean, I think it's going to be like Rambo, but maybe with different names and stuff. Okay. I'm not really sure. But yeah, yeah I think I they're doing the Expendables and stuff, too. I mean, because obviously he's going to be in the Indian Army instead of... You know, right, yeah, he has to be in the Indian Army, right? right? right. I know that they're doing some stuff against China, so maybe I think they're fighting China right now, or there's some kind of border war with China. So that's maybe where they're. Where, is that where they're going to be set? You could do Expendables because they were doing maritime fucking anti piracy missions and Expendables and doing espionage. So you know you could. You yeah, know, I mean, sh- Expendables that, could be from any country. Yeah, I mean that that formula could just be. Yeah. You know, they they could they could do that anywhere. Pr- I'd watch that. Much. I probably I'd would watch too. That. I'm They'd not probably do lie. a better job than fucking modern day Hollywood. Not going to lie, I'd probably watch that. Oh, uh, yeah. But yeah, that's the thing. Is So, if you've only seen the later Rambo movies... Now, I feel like the fourth Rambo, that was the super gory one, right? Uh, yeah. that's what Actually, my favorite ones was First Blood, and then number four, which is The Fight Continues. Yeah. Those Same. are my two favorite ones. Well, because those two... And I think most... Per, 99% of people would probably agree with you. Two but, was pretty good. Three was like an over the top action movie. You could tell that. Well, two was going... pretty over the top too. I got it. Yeah, yeah, but and then um, the last one, uh, the one where he's fighting the Mexican cartels, it was okay, but man, it left me wanting some stuff. It's like there wasn't enough action in it, and it turned out that there was some stuff cut out. I'd like to see the uncut version. Yeah. Remember how he cut that one dude's head off, but they didn't show it. Yeah. I think they show it in the uncensored version. I want to see it. That's what I heard. That they did show him cutting the head off? I mean, I heard that. I don't know if it's true or not. I'd like to see it. It's probably better. It's like the theatrical release of Expendables 3 isn't any good. But if you have the the Blu-ray, the the director's cut, it's much better. Yeah. Yeah, because 3, they had to cut out all the cussing because fucking, what's his name was in it? Who, Chuck Norris? Chuck Norris will fuck a movie up. Well... Yeah. You can't you can't say you can't even say damn around fucking Chuck Norris. He won't be in that movie, and they just what a baby. I'd be yeah. like you know nobody likes you that much anyway. There's a lot of stuff that was cut out, and it didn't make any <laughs> sense evidently in the theatrical cut. The um, the Blu-ray extended cut that I have is fucking great. I, that's my favorite one. Was part three. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's it, it's crazy. I mean it's fucking zany, but it's good. Well, yeah. And but yes, Antonio Banderas is fucking great in it. I always kind of liked him. He's, yeah. he's kind of a cool dude. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so if if your whole conception of Rambo is like from the second and third movie, this kind of like over the top oh! kind of yeah. thing, um, then probably you should watch First Blood because it's a much more serious, yeah, still an action movie, but it has like more of a thriller, more of a psychological yeah. type it, of thing. It kind of feels Spielbergian. Did you notice that? I kind of thought, like, the parts where he was in the woods, in the where woods, the cops yeah. were having, and he was, like, kind of setting traps, almost, um, it almost kind of seemed, and Jerry Goldsmith did the score for yeah, this, yeah. and it's actually, the score is really good. 
it, it almost had a Friday the 13th kind of thing yeah. there for yeah. a second. Like so in some of the uh, woods shots, like yeah. when it was getting dark or the storm was coming or whatever, I said, this almost looks like a slasher movie. A little bit. But, um, and too, like where they shot it, like I said, in British Columbia, holy crap, that was like gorgeous. I thought like where the cliff was and everything, like where he was climbing down the cliff and the dude was shooting yeah. at him and stuff. That's like some, um... That's some big, like, national park up there or something like that. And, like, all the mountains had, like, fucking fog all of them. Because, like I said, it was wintertime. But, yeah, it was, like, you know, nice cinematography. Just good just good score, good acting. It's just, like, a, it's just a fucking classic, man. And, uh, yeah, so I think... And, like I said, I'm pretty sure it was Louis that sent us, the, sent us yeah. this. It was just a couple of days ago. Let's look at it. I don't know. So up, down. I don't know. But, yeah, yeah so uh, that's the Steelbook Blu-ray there. So thanks very much for that. And uh, I guess that'll do it for... You have anything else you want to no, say about it. First Blood? All right. So that'll do it for this movie retrospective. And we'll see you on the next one. Bye. <laughs>